everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads, and I wanted to show you in today's Better Beater episode just a simple little idea that we thought of while we were doing a nice video on an unboxing for our July Best Bead Box. One thing that you can do with a lot of patterns is alter them to your needs. So if it's a component, you may make it into a ring, a bracelet, or a necklace. But what if you already finished the piece? You can easily add a band onto a pair of earrings to make them into a ring. But what happens if you already have a ring made? I know Marissa does tons of rings, and I tend to have my hands in water all the time, be chasing after kids, gardening, playing sports. So I tend not to wear a lot of beaded rings, but I love a lot of her different tutorials, and I've also made quite a lot of rings myself. So I thought today's Better Beater episode, what we could do is show you how to actually go ahead and make your ring into a pendant without taking it apart. A nice seed beaded band should allow you, with a little bit of thread scrap, to make an actual pendant. So I have 7.006 wildfire beading thread on here, and I have some left over from my project. This is actually a lot more than I need. I have some rings sitting here, the gemstone bezeled ring. Again, I'll wear it every once in a while, but then it kind of drives me nuts and I tend not to wear the gemstone and the jewelry rings. I even sometimes take off my engagement ring because I'm always into everything with my hands. So what I thought I would do is show you how to take a ring like this, uh, like the tulip ring here, like the faceted flowers ring and actually make it into a pendant. So you can see here with the faceted flower rings with the crystal rings that if you bend the actual ring band backwards, you will create a loop. This loop can then be used to go through an omega necklace, a beaded rope, a chain piece of leather to make it actually into a pendant. So I'm gonna use Marissa's faceted flower ring here lovely design by the way, and I'm bending over the actual band of the ring in half. Hers is based on a right angle weave, mine here is peyote, and here's another band of Marissa's with that right angle weave. And with that tulip petals and with the faceted flowers, I'm going to bend the band back upon itself with a new piece of thread, and actually I'm going to switch so you can see it, to a nice piece of black thread here. I'm bending it so I can have it sit comfortably that it's not pulling the pendant kind of back, what's going to be the pendant back, and I want to make sure that I have enough room for the bail. Generally, unless you have a really small finger, you're going to have room. I'm going to line up the piece so that way I have it sitting right next to one another. Starting at the back, I'm going to sew through the portion of the band where it starts to touch and overlap on the other side. Pulling the thread out there, I'm just going to let this black thread end hang out. Go over to the other side. You can put a little seed bead there if you want, but honestly by the time you get a uh, string or a rope or cord going through, you won't see it. You're going to go through the two beads on the opposite side of the band. Bringing these together, I'm going to sew back through the two beads that are sitting right after the gold. So I'm lining them up right across from one another and I'm going to sew through those gold beads. Now I'm not going to sew through the black beads because I want to keep my bail as large as I can without pulling back on the project. From here I give a nice tight pull. Make sure all that extra thread kind of gets tucked in between the project Sew my thread and needle back through those two gold beads again. And when they come out those gold beads, I'm then also going to sew down the black bead at the base here. Remember my thread was coming out that black bead. So once I get down there, what I'm going to do is take my two thread ends together and simply tie a knot. This is just going to kind of hold it in place. Now if you can't sew through to the other side of the ring really, really easily, you'll stop there, go ahead then and sew over to the next spot starting a new thread. I'm simply going to sew over to the opposite side, going right along that ladder stitch, going up my gold beads that sit parallel on the opposite side, 
And if I was doing peyote stitch, I'd be doing the exact same thing, going over and stitching, going through the rows and stitching along the side. Once I have my beads through there, again, I'm going to grab that center beads there that sit directly across from it. So straight over then, right across the project, back through those gold beads. That's going to have the thread run between the beads. Straight over then, one more time, down through those gold beads. And this is all doing this without taking the piece apart. When I get to the other side here then, I'll take my thread and needle down through that black bead there, over to the other side, and just like, you know, ending a button or a closure, simply take this thread, tie the thread ends once, twice, and then burn off the thread ends. Now I have that nice bale that is set up and actually sits great on the pendant. And I have the option if I decide later on that I want it to be a ring again. I can just take my thread burner or my threads up and I know exactly where I'm going to be able to disconnect it without hurting the actual band of the project. I actually love this little faceted flower ring as a pendant, taking a piece of cord through and wearing it on my neck. I can do the same thing with these little tulip wands, I can do it with the actual little uh, crystal ring, and any ring that has a little band like that, you can sew over in that same fashion and make it into a pendant. While this is not some rocket science idea, I think it is a good idea for how to change one design without having to take it apart into another. I'm sure you guys will have tons of extra ideas of how to make things like this happen and how to make it possible. So make sure that you comment below the video to help out your fellow beading community. Another idea, if you only have one earring because you lost one, put a jump ring on it and turn it into a pendant. As with all of these videos, the goal really is to make you a better beater, whether or not it's through design ideas, through knowledge, or even technical skills. Hopefully, if you haven't already, you will subscribe to this YouTube channel, click in the corner to get regular updates from us here at Potomac Beads. If you want to get more involved, join our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making and exchange with a wonderful group of crafters that are so inspirational and so helpful. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for helping to build up our beading community and have fun creating and making your jewelry.